you think it was helpful for your guys the fact that they ended up in a tie with Oklahoma? You know, that, that way they, they know all you got to do is, you know, one beat one guy and it, it's a different race. Yeah, we, we got away with one, honestly. We rested two guys up there uh, and thought we'd get through the region without them running. Almost rested a third. Um, we almost rested Shane Moskowitz, which would have been a disaster because if we had rested him, we wouldn't have made it. And I think we've got the best team in the country, and, and to not make it would be inexcusable. And so um, we all learned a lesson, the coaching staff, the athletes, that, you know, this is a dang good region, and you, you better show up ready to go or, or things might not go your way. And, you know, we had a couple nervous moments there where we weren't sure if we made it in or not. And, man, I've never had a, a sinking feeling like that where I thought, how did I goof this up so bad? Are you, are you happy then that you guys got this type of regional heading into the nationals? Because you, as you mentioned, you, you hadn't really faced a lot of competition throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the region's tough, and we knew that. And Oklahoma and Tulsa are really good teams. Kansas, Missouri, Illinois. I mean, there's some very good teams in this region. And, um, you know, I think we got a little bit of a wake-up call. And I think certain guys on the team feel like they were given a, a second chance, basically, you know, that – um, I know Carol Rosso was in tears <laughs> after the race. He was up there. We had him up there and <clears throat> didn't run him. And he was in tears afterwards because he thought we hadn't made it. And um, I think he feels like he owes the rest of uh, the guys that got him there, you know, a big performance at the national championships. And he wants to, you know, he definitely wants to capitalize and take advantage of the, the second chance. What does it say about both your men's and women's team, men going for the 19th time in 20 years and the women with their third consecutive? Yeah, I think the the – the long-term consistency is, is a huge part of the program for the men's side. I think the women were starting to develop that. I think, you know, when you've got 19 of the last 20 years qualifying for the national championships, you're, you're just expected to be there. And when high school kids are looking at programs and trying to decide where they go, they look at this program and realize that if they, they come to Oklahoma State, they're going to the national championships. And now I think over the last five or six years, I'm thinking if I go to national state, I'm contending for a national title every year. Whether we win it or not, Maybe not, but we're going to be in contention every year, and I think that's that's exciting too. It would be exciting to me if I was a high school recruit looking at places to go. And who do you think needs to step up the most for this upcoming weekend? On the men's side, if we if every guy in our top seven runs equal to the best race they've had this year, we're gonna we're gonna be very hard to beat. I think we got we got a really good group. Um, we got great up front running with with Germa Shadrach and Tom Farrell. At the same time, we've got great depth. I think we go back six guys. I think we've got maybe a 10 to 20 second spread now, one to six. And I think a lot of programs have either really good upfront power, but they're hurting in the back, or they don't have that upfront power, but they got a real tight pack of guys that, you know, their fifth man's much better than maybe the teams with the upfront power. We've got both right now. I think we've got really good guys that can penetrate that top 10 and, and get us low sticks. And we've got a bunch of guys running as four, five, six guys that could be all American, could be top 40. And, um, to have five All-Americans, uh, it's hard to lose with a group like that if you can do it on the day. What about the women's side? On the women's side, we're just trying to improve. I, I think we're still at a, in, a, in the growing stages of the women's program. And, you know, we were 17th two years ago, 30th last year. And uh, we hope we're better than, than those finishes. I hope we're in the top 15 someplace. Um, I think if we, if the stars really came together for us and we had perfect days, maybe we could ha have, a, have a run at the top 10. But I think that would take, you know, near perfect day. So, um, you know, I think anything between 10 and 15 is, a, is about where we're hoping for. Speaking of dodging the bullet, women's only get in by a point. You know, what do you hope that they take from, from that performance, you know, just barely getting in there? Same thing. I think, you know, the, honestly what happened on both the men's and women's side is we had um, runners who were in scoring position for us running really well have major problems with 400 meters to go in the race. On the women's side, Victoria Hanna came by me with 400 meters to go. She was running great, looked great. She was running as our number three runner, and it looked like we were cinched to make it. And I turned around, thought, okay, the race is over, didn't even pay attention to the finish, and didn't realize that she collapsed 30 meters before the finish line and didn't finish. And that changed everything for us. And, you know, taking out one of your top three runners and hoping to still make it is tough. And we just squeaked in by a point. And, um, on the men's side, same thing. Fabian Clarkson was running as our fifth guy. I think he was in about 12th or 13th place with 400 meters to go, and he ended up 29th. It was a, it was a hot day. It was windy. It's an 800 meters uphill finish, and there was there were bodies laying all over the course. I mean, there was people not finishing, especially in the women's race, um, which is surprising because the men's race is further. You'd think there'd be more kind of carnage that way, but but there were there were people all over the place having tough days, and we had two of them, and it just happened that there were two people that were. Um, scoring for us and running really well and had us in position to do the things we needed to do. <clears throat> so.
you, you mentioned on the, the guys' side, those those top three guys, you know, obviously they have the experience. You know, what is it going to take from them as, as maybe not running, but as, as leaders going into this to, to say, hey, you know, yeah. this is what we need to do if we're going to get back on top? You know, our teams have been kind of really good at staying poised and calm and collected during races and running with a lot of um, confidence. And um, it's up to those guys to kind of um, – kind of put that attitude on the rest of the team. And I think the younger guys like Shadrach, or sorry, like um, um, Kirabel and Shane Moskowitz and Brian Golke or whoever else runs in that group, they need those upperclassmen who have been there and been through it and know what it's all about to kind of calm the, calm the waters a little bit because the, the national race is really high intensity. It's um, you know 250 runners coming through the halfway point in about 15 second spread and it's just chaotic and I think if you're not ready for it you don't have that senior leadership or those upperclassmen to kind of lead you through it and sort of say just don't worry about anything follow me and I'll, I'll put the pace for us and I'll, I'll pick where we need to be in the race then it can be um, a really stressful situation and sometimes people make mistakes when they run under stress so those those upperclassmen have been there Joe Manella Fascia, Shadrach, um, Germa Machezo and Tom Farrell they need to kind of more than anything just sort of Keep everybody calm, focused, and, and just make sure that everybody understands if everybody runs equal to the way they've run all year, we're a tough team to beat. We talked earlier in the year of, of, of Gurma. It's more of a, a team mentality for him this year instead of all about himself. You know, with, with him running like that, you know, how beneficial is, this, is that for this team, the fact that you have a guy like that with that, that much talent who's, who's showing that he's, he's wanting it for the team instead of himself? Well, we've always had that from somebody. You know, in the last couple of years, it's been German Fernandez and Colby Lowe. Before them, it was Ryan Vale. Um, and now it's, it's Germa and, and Tom and Shadrach that are, that are willing to put individual kind of glory aside and say the first thing we need to do is make sure we win this team title. And to do that, we need to not take any unnecessary risks going after individual championships. We need to run calm, cool, and collected in a conservative way, and if we get to the end of the race and we're feeling it, then maybe we can go after, you know, um, individual places. But the first thing is get that team championship, and it's invaluable. You can't put a, you can't put a, a price tag on that. That's invaluable, and I think, um, you know, Germa's a guy that could just like German and Colby before him or Ryan Vale before them could have gone for an individual title. And Germa's already told me, I'm going to do what it takes to make sure we win, and I'm going to keep the guys together, and I'll worry about you know, my individual um, accolades later. How much do you think last year is, has left an imprint on some of those guys returning, seeing Wisconsin there at the top and, and, and you guys taking second? Yeah, I think that was huge. I think there was a lot of people, a lot of guys in our team, even going into the race, in, you know, at the end of the season, I knew we were in trouble. I knew that Wisconsin was running like the better team and that it was going to take a major turnaround in the last couple of weeks for us to win. And I think as much as I tried to stress that the guys and say, hey, we're not the best team right now, I think they didn't believe me. They thought we were just going to show up and win. And I think uh, it was disappointing. And um, they don't want to be back there again. And it really brought some humility back to our program a little bit, I think, and got us back to doing the things we did before we won, running with a chip on our shoulder and like we have something to prove. And not like we're the you know the, the crown prince of cross country like I think we did last year a little bit, and guys worked hard over the summer. They they spent the time. They did the things we needed to do, and we're a much different team than we were this time last year. I I'm much more confident about this group than I have been in a long time. Along the lines of what you were saying there, you look at what happened at the regional. Mm -hmm. and it was great. It was the three Oklahoma schools. Mm -hmm. Is that a subtle reminder that? Hey, there's people on your heels. Yeah, I, I went over this earlier. We 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 dodged a bullet, and um, it was it was almost a tragic coaching mistake. You know, to, we rested two guys in our top five and uh, went in there with a little too much hubris, hubris probably, thinking we were going to um, waltz in and, and walk right into the national championships. And, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, gave us a really a, a real scare. And um, you know, boy, I was sweated there for about 15 minutes before the official results were announced because I thought we hadn't made it and I was just crushed and couldn't see how I was going to come back here and face people and say, yeah, we have the best team in the country, but we're not going to the national championships because we blew it. Have you, have you talked much yet about the course in Louisville? No. 
Mm -mm. Talk a little bit about the course. Yeah, the course is different this year. You know, and um, we've gotten used to Terre Haute. It's been there nine of the last ten years. And Terre Haute's a wide open course with big, big sweeping turns, and it's never really a factor in terms of trying to pass people or move up in the in the pack. And and the course we're going to is much more narrow and has sharp 180 degree turns in several places throughout the course. So, you know, our typical um, strategies run very conservatively come from behind and kind of move up through the course of the race. And I think that changes a little bit now because I think if you're too far back in this race with a big field that's competitive, it's hard to pass when you're constantly turning corners and the, and, the, and the pathway's narrow and there's not a lot of room to get around people. So we probably have to run a little more aggressively than we've run in the past. And that, that changes our style. We've changed the way we've trained this year. We've changed the way we've raced. Um, in the early season, we did some experimenting with different race strategies just to, just to sort of get used to maybe trying something different, and I think we're going to hopefully capitalize on that at the national meet. How much work will you do when you get there this week? I mean, I know you'll walk the course, probably run it a mm -hmm. couple of times. I mean, how much can you do and still keep your legs as fresh as you want their legs to be? There's not a lot we can do from here on in. I think, you know, a mistake that a lot of times we make in, in distance running is trying to, trying to get fit at the end of the year. And at this point, I think you can't get much more fit, but you can get a lot more tired or a lot more injured or a lot more sick. I think right now it's just maintenance, and it's just going out there and getting easy runs in, really seeing the course, and we'll run it three. We'll run it Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We'll run it all three days. Uh, we'll run it one time each day and sort of get a look at it, and that's probably all we'll do is just, just run over the course, so about 10K a day, um, which is light compared to what these guys normally do. But, um, but yeah, that's all that's left to do is just to, to, to get a glimpse of and try to get some idea of how it's going to run and where are the opportunities to pass and where do you need to be tucked in and, and uh, not trying to pass. One last thing, I'm just interested because, you know, as a coach, how are you with your athletes on the road? I mean, are you highly regimented or are you let them kind of have some freedom? Mm -hmm. Do you want them to go kind of when you're in a place like a Louisville, which maybe some of them have never been there before? Do you let them go out and see things? Do you say, no, stay in the hotel room, stay off your feet and all that? How do you mix that up? Because it is supposed to be, as well as a national championship experience, it is supposed to be an educational experience. Yeah, I used to be more, let's stay off the feet, it's high, let's hibernate. And um, I think that, that just, basically you're running the race in your mind every single day. You're sitting in that hotel room thinking about the race every single day and it starts to get fatiguing and tiring. And I think it's good to kind of go out, they'll go to the movies or go downtown. We're staying downtown, so they'll see a little bit and we'll go out to restaurants every night and kind of do some things in town uh, just, to, just to take the mind off the constant, you know, barrage that you're getting from yourself about what's coming up and the importance of it. So definitely we'll try to keep it light a little bit, especially through Thursday. There's a NCAA banquet on Thursday night, and then maybe Friday we get a little more serious and, and kind of dial it in a little bit. Recommendation. Mm -hmm. Recommendation only. Okay. Because you are runners. Yep. Go to the Kentucky Derby Museum at Churchill. Yeah, that'd be cool. And, and see that, because it, it, it's a cool experience. Yeah. Right yeah. So, Very that's, cool. That's my only recommendation. Yeah. Thanks.